in February of this year, Leon Lee teased one of the most interesting cases that we've seen in quite a while. This is the brand new collab between Leon Lee and Dan Case. It's called the A3 MATX. And I'm gonna spoil this video from the jump. This is a slam dunk from Leon Lee and Dan Case. This case is awesome, but I'm gonna show you what's awesome about it. So let's do our usual thing. We'll do a build, we'll test the thermals, and then I'll let you know if it's worth your hard-earned money. Spoiler alert, it's definitely worth your hard-earned money. Let's start off with side panel removal on the A3. To remove the side panel, there's a little tab on the edge of the panel, and you can use your thumb and you pull that towards you, you can lift the panel away from the case. The rear panel is the same deal and there's a little tab and you can use your finger in there and use your thumb and then pull it towards you and lift that side panel away from the case. To remove the top panel, there's two thumb screws. Loosen them up with your thumbs because they're called thumb screws for a reason. And then what you wanna do is slide that panel towards you or pull back on it and then you can lift that panel away from the case. To remove the front panel, the top panel needs to be taken off first. There's no way around it. What you wanna do is put your fingers in these little notches and then pull the top of the panel towards you and then you can lift that away from the case. I reckon the front panel on the A3 can almost be camouflaged with our wall. Next, we wanna remove the side fan bracket and there's two screws that hold this in. Once you remove those screws, you can pull that panel away from the top and then lift it away from the case. There's also an included dust filter on the bottom of the case. It's very easy to remove. Just put your finger in the little notch and pull it away from the case. As you can see, it's not a very interesting dust filter, but it is there just in case you wanted it. For storage support, this is where the A3 begins to get interesting. And this is gonna be the theme for the rest of this section of the video. On this front panel, well, this is actually supposed to be installed on the side panel when you pull it out of the box, but that's what I'm talking about. You can have two 2.5 inch SSDs on this panel and it's removable with these two screws here. Essentially with the A3, you've got multiple locations for drive mounting. So you'll notice that there's notches along the edge here. That means there's four locations to mount drives to. So the top location won't work. It just doesn't fit there and it doesn't sit flush. The next notch down, it sits flush. The third one is actually the second location and then the third one down and so and so forth. You get the idea, right? There's four locations at the front, but that isn't the end of it with storage support. In here, in fact, it lives on the side panel when you pull it out of the box. Well, let's show you one of the other tricks that this case can do, and I'm gonna show you this again. There's three more heights you can put your drives in. So at this location, you can put it in the top, and then we've got this location in the middle and then there's another one towards the bottom. All of this means that there's quite a few considerations when it comes to compatibility. And when you're building in a small form factor case, that's usually the story. It's better to understand what hardware you wanna use and buy a case around that. Don't try and make things fit that shouldn't fit. But we're not done with storage yet because on the bottom of the case, on the inside, depending on the layout that you have, you can do a 3.5 inch spinning rush drive or another single 2.5 inch SSD. Much like the SSD bracket, there's quite a bit of compatibility with your power supplies as well. So first of all, you'll notice you've got this power supply bracket that comes with the case. Typically it's installed at the front and you've got four different height locations on the front of the case, much like you did with the SSD bracket. What this means is we can move it to a whole bunch of different spots. And there's a lot of different considerations for heights in terms of the power supply. This will support SFX, SFXL and ATX power supplies with a maximum ATX power supply length of 140 millimeters. All this means is this will limit your GPU compatibility, which I'll come back to in a moment. And when we mount it on the side, there are other considerations to do with cooling as well, which we'll also come back to in a moment. Again, you've got three locations on the side of the case to mount the power supply, much like the SSD, but there's lots of other considerations. 
The A3 does other typical small form factor case things like it has an extension cable for the power supply and it's got a bunch of clips you can use to route cables above the top of your motherboard and this will hold that cable into place. You can also use that for EPS power as well. And much like what we see on other small form factor-ish cases, there's an external power connector that plugs into the extension cable on the inside of your case. Fan and radiator support is where the A3 really shines. First of all, that side bracket that we removed earlier, if you want to install fans or radiators on it, there's a couple considerations. So first of all, if you're mounting the power supply in the side location, you can fit up to a 360 millimeter radiator here or three 120 mil fans or two 140 mil fans or a 280 millimeter radiator. You get the idea. However, if you want to front mount your power supply, you're limiting that to a maximum of a 280 millimeter radiator or two 140 mil fans or a 240 millimeter radiator or two 120 mil fans. The top's got a lot of different considerations here. So first of all, three 120 mil fans or two 140 mil fans at the top position for that power supply bracket. If you're moving that down to the second position, you've got the same amount of compatibility. You need to be aware that the second you move the power supply bracket down, you're reducing your GPU compatibility, but we'll come back to that as well. And in the lowest position, you can do up to a 360 millimeter radiator. The bonus is that at the bottom of the case, you can do three 120 mil fans in almost every single configuration. The main thing to keep into account is the thickness of your GPU. Some MATX boards have the top PCIe slot in either the first or second position. So, so you'll need to take that into account based on your motherboard. And lastly, on the rear of the A3, you can drop a single 120 millimeter fan back there. I think motherboard support is pretty obvious in the A3. It supports ITX up to MATX and we'll be building with an MATX board in this case because it makes a whole lot more sense. As for maximum CPU cooler height, you're looking at a maximum height of 165 millimeters in the A3. For internal case wiring, we've got a USB type C cable, we've got front panel audio cables, we've got the cable for all your lights and your switches to let you know your system's up and running and to turn it on, and a USB type A connector for the front panel USB 3.2 type A. For front panel connectivity, we've got two USB type A ports, we've got a power button, a headphone jack, a microphone jack, and a USB type C port. It almost looks like Lee and Lee wanted to allow you to install this bracket with all the ports at the top, there's screws here, but it's not an option, but it would have been very cool if you could do that. Now, there's a lot to go through with GPU support in the A3. There's a lot of information to digest here. So let's try and make this as easy as possible for you guys to understand. When you've got your power supply in the front top position, you're looking at a maximum GPU length of 415 millimeters. Now, as you move the power supply down on the front, you reduce that compatibility. So in the second position, you're looking at around about 344 millimeters. And then when you move it down to the third position, you're looking at 334 millimeters. And similarly, that's the deal with the compatibility if you side mount your power supply as well. You need to take into account that the cables that come out of the bottom of your power supply will take up some space too, and that's going to reduce that even more. But there's ways around that by doing good cable management. So essentially, 415 millimeters max if you don't want to have a 360 mil rad at the top. The best thing to do is set up the internal layout that's really going to give you the best balance between the internal capacity and your internal compatibility. And basically just whatever gives you the best layout for your hardware. I've said this many times over the years in regards to small form factor cases and hardware compatibility that it's much better to research the layout that you want find the correct hardware and build your system around the hardware and the case before buying anything. There are a lot of different ways to measure things online before taking the plunge and the A3 MATX is no exception to that. Although the compatibility is pretty amazing, yeah, there, you know, not everything's gonna fit exactly how you want it to fit in your head. So it's better to watch videos like this. I'm not saying that you have to watch it, but that's kind of the point of me having it here so you don't have to go out and waste money of your own. And I can give you a bit of an idea of what's going on with the case. Like I said, these aren't issues, they're considerations to make. And that's always the case of small form factor. This is a cool little bracket. 
basically it slots into the little notches on the bottom of the case where you've got your hard disk mounts. And let's say you're not doing SSDs or fans down the bottom. It's got this little magnetic piece that attaches to it to give you a GPU support bracket. And this comes with the case. This is very, very handy. What if I told you though, that we're not done with GPU compatibility because ladies and gents, this is one of the first MATX cases to allow you to install a vertical GPU. There's an optional vertical GPU bracket with a PCIe Gen 4 riser cable. At first glance, it looks like a regular GPU support bracket that attaches to the case, but this one mounts to the fan cutouts on the bottom of the case. Obviously, if you've got no fans down there, what makes this really interesting is it kind of just sits in the bottom of the case. And then you'll notice you've got the PCIe cutouts on the back of the case and they don't have the horizontal support brackets. That leaves it completely open. And the way this works is you pull these brackets out. And when you remove these, you can put this additional bracket in place of it. And it's got this hole on the back where you can just jam your cables through and ram them in and make sure they don't fall out. But basically, the GPU support bracket sits inside the case and you pass your cables through that hole. I hope this all makes sense. The other thing to be aware of is when you're doing a vertical GPU bracket in this case, you'll want to side mount your power supply. If you're front mounting it, you're reducing the length of the whole setup and I wouldn't recommend doing that. But there's one more optional case accessory it's a tempered glass side panel. And you can purchase that for around about 13 US dollars. That's everything I think you need to know about the A3 MATX for now. And I know there's a lot of information with this case. It is very overwhelming for me too, but let's do our usual thing. Let's do a build. We'll pick the configuration we think is the best. And then I'll let you know if the A3 MATX is worth your hard earned money. Spoiler alert, it's very cheap. Yeah. Let's do a build thing.
right, let's take a look at the thermals. What you're seeing on your screen right now is the thermals are quite good. I decided to test with the TG panel on as well, just for a little bit of comparison because it is an optional piece. Maybe you'll want to know what the thermal performance is like. And to be honest, there's only slight temperature deltas between having the mesh panel on and the TG side panel. What more can I say about the thermals? They're right here for your beautiful eyes and yeah, they're fairly good. Okay, if you're interested in any of the hardware used, there's a PC part picker list down below and you can peruse that list and see what all the hardware is. But as usual, there's little cards on screen when I go through all of that. So you can do that bit too. I know we're gonna get some questions uh, along the lines of, why did you use the TL LCD fans in the bottom underneath the GPU? They're reverse pitch fans and they're the only TL fans that I have in reverse pitch that would work and happen to be the ones with the screen. I only had one TL fan that follows the normal airflow path. So that's why there's no LCDs on the top, if that makes sense. I would have been really cool to do that. I had a cool idea, but when I was looking through my boxes for fans, I was like, hey, let's use all these new TL fans that have been out for six months. <laughs> new TL fans that have been out for six months. <laughs> let's talk about the A3 and ATX. First of all, the thing with this case is it's very confusing when it comes to compatibility and this may become an issue with the case over the long term if you don't research whatever it is that you want in your build. This is something that we typically find with small form factor cases. And to be honest, when you're building something smaller, you kind of know what you're getting yourself into already. And that is no exception with the A3 MATX. I know throughout the whole video, I've been referring to this as small form factor because it kind of is, but Lee and Lee's calling it micro form factor, which kind of makes sense because if we compare this in size to something like the Cooler Master NR200, the NR200, I think from memory is 20 liters. This is 26 liters, only six liters difference. But take a look at this guys, look side by side. There's not much difference in size here. Now, if you had to ask me, if I was to choose the NR200 or the A3 right now, being that, you know, we've built heaps of NR200s and use them for things, I would choose the A3 every single time. And here's why. MATX gives us way better compatibility with things, especially if you're not necessarily building a gaming PC, if you're building a productivity PC and you're using a smaller GPU, you have access to one or two more PCIe slots, which makes it kind of better for people like me. Like I could put a 10 gig ethernet card in the bottom if I didn't put fans at the bottom as well. So there is that, it's cheaper than the NR200 as well. We'll circle back to that in a moment. Now, not everything is sunshine, rainbows, and lollipops with the A3 because it does have a couple shortcomings. The first thing that I noticed was, I thought it was peculiar that you couldn't remove the top bracket to install the radiator. I thought that that would probably be something that would be a no brainer because you could, in fact, put the cooler in last and it would make it so much easier to put the power supply in earlier. And let's say you wanted to get access to the top of the motherboard after the fact, you then have to pull your power supply out, then pull your cooler out rather than just having a couple screws in the top and lifting the radiator out that way. I think I know why they've done it and it's for structural rigidity, but after a bit of investigation, basically where all the rivets are, they could do it so easily. So yeah, I just think that one is a little bit of an oversight, but you know, there's probably a reason that I don't know why they've done that. When you're using MATX boards, the top PCIe slot is not always in the first position. From memory, a bunch of ASRock boards actually use the second position. So if you're putting in a graphics card, you'll need to take that into consideration with clearance, especially if you're wanting to put fans in the bottom. And if you've got a three slot card, that means the bottom of your GPU is sitting on the bottom of the case and there's no possibility to put fans in. I was pushing it with using this PNY card as it was because of the Leon Lee fans on the bottom. This card is just over three slots thick and the card sits right on the fans. And 
yeah, I had to do a little bit of adjustment with the tension on the screws on the bottom to pull the fans down a little bit more. So I over tightened them because the fans from the GPU were rubbing and I decided to leave this like this so I could tell you guys about it. Anything over three slots and especially for fans like this, yeah, just be careful with that. I actually wouldn't really recommend doing it that way. But again, we do these things so we can learn and show you guys what to do and what not to do in these situations. Another thing to note with this is fan compatibility at the top on the radiator. Now, the whole rubric, let's call it a rubric of compatibility and configuration and considerations and all that stuff is confusing for the regular person, if I'm being honest. And the thing that I think no one's really gonna talk about is the width of fans because the fans can be 120 millimeters, but some fans are wider than that. Does that make sense? Because these TL fans from Leon Lee, they're probably 125 millimeters wide. What that means is when you're putting the radiator in the top, instead of you just being able to maneuver it in, you have to account for how wide the fans are and them touching the top heat sinks for the VRM cooling on a motherboard. That is something that I didn't expect to be an issue but it is, so take that into account if you're using fans like this that are slightly wider than the profile of the radiator. That is surprising to me that Leon Lee did that considering this is a Leon Lee cooler and Leon Lee fans. It just doesn't make sense that they didn't think of that themselves, but I guess you can't really test every motherboard on earth, but again, just think about it. Small form, sorry, micro form factor things, right? Other than that little concern, I still think that the A3 MATX is an absolute slam dunk from Dan Case and Leon Lee. In fact, I like it so much that I think I'm gonna transplant most of my gaming PC into this case because of the size and the cooler compatibility. Even my big Noctua cooler is gonna fit in here without any issues. So yeah, I'll probably do that after Computex. Maybe I'll make a video, maybe I won't, but this thing is, really freaking good. So good work, Dan Case and Leon Lee. You guys nailed it. You also nailed the most important thing about this case, and that's the price. If you're interested in the Leon Lee and Dan Case A3 MATX micro form factor case, it's going for 69 US dollars. Absolutely insane value. The other thing is, if you were looking at buying something like the Deepcool CH160 before, throw that idea out, chuck it in the bin and buy this instead, because this is way better quality, way better build quality, way better compatibility, and you're not sacrificing compatibility with a lot of big GPUs. Don't even bother with the Deepcool case, it's crap, buy this instead. Trust me, it's gonna be worth it, right? I'm, I'm gonna use it myself, that's how much I like it. Finally, I have a message for Leon Lee about the A3 MATX and it's about the release for this case. Leon Lee, if you watch this video, can you please not release cases a week before Computex because we're stressed enough as it is trying to get everything organized and then we've got a whole bunch of case reviews to do because this uh, probably isn't the last case review before Computex that we have to film. So yeah, thanks Leon Lee for stressing me out. You're just lucky that the A3 MATX is fucking brilliant. <laughs> they have to hear it. They have to hear it, Claire. Yeah. It's very stressful right now. Ladies and gents, if you like the music you heard here, I make all the music. It's available by clicking that join button right down there. Down below, it's, it's like you've used YouTube before. It's down there somewhere. Click it, join, get the music. Cheapest tier will give you music. Anyways, whew, I need a holiday after all of this and what's to come next. I'm your boy, Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. And uh, we'll see you uh, at least two more times before Computex for more case reviews. <laughs>